This is my current DIY OpenIPC Air Unit. And this is the Thinker Tiny Air Unit, which was sent to me for review by the OpenIPC hardware team. For those who are new to the topic, OpenIPC is an open source firmware for IP cameras, the kind usually used for CCTV. It became relevant in the context of FPV drones because with a Wi-Fi module connected to an IP camera, it can be used to broadcast video wirelessly. At the moment, there are two options of FPV software that can run on the OpenIPC platform. Wi-Fi Broadcast New Generation and Ruby FPV. I have been using OpenIPC with Wi-Fi Broadcast for a couple of months now on my 2-inch drone, which is a DIY setup using a cheap IP camera flashed with OpenIPC. To receive the video, I use 3D printed goggles with my Android phone with the Pixel Pilot app and an external Wi-Fi module. In my past videos, I showed the process of flashing OpenIPC on such a camera, how I built the goggles for my phone and how I mounted the camera on my drone. I've put links to these videos in the description. Now, apart from developing the OpenIPC software, the OpenIPC team have also been working hard to develop new hardware, especially for drones. They have released several generations of OpenIPC Air units and produced them in small batches. The Thinker Tiny, which I received, is their newest production unit, which can be bought from the OpenIPC store. The Thinker Tiny comes in a box like this. It comes with all the necessary essentials, such as an RJ45 adapter for the Ethernet connection, a PCB antenna, some wires with plugs to connect the Thinker Tiny to your drone, and some mounting screws. It also comes with this 3D printed bracket to protect the back of the sensor module. I also received another device, the OpenIPC Debugger. It's designed to restore firmware in any situation. I assume it can be used to unbrick the air unit if something goes wrong during firmware upgrade. I hope I won't be needing it, but it's nice to have handy. In the box we just have the device and some wires with a plug. So now I'll be trying to install uh, the Thinker uh, into my trusty Pavo 20 frame. Uh, and to do that I'll need to take out this uh, IP camera that I've been using and you can really see the size difference here. Uh, the finger is so much smaller, uh, which I really like. Um, unfortunately, the Wi-Fi module here is much less powerful than uh, the one I was using previously. Um, you can also get a version of the Thinker which doesn't have a, a small Wi-Fi uh, adapter. Instead, it has an SD card slot here. Um, and uh, you have to solder up an external Wi-Fi module, uh, such as this one. Um, but this is the one I received, so I'm going to test it as it came. Uh, but it came with an antenna like this which um, is not very handy to put on a drone. I think it's designed to put on uh, planes since it has um, like a sticky tape at the back. So I guess you could stick it on a, on a wing uh, of an FPV plane, but I am going to use just a simple dipole because it's um, more convenient on a drone. I know these are not very good. Uh, I was using them before, but it's a difference. If you have two of them and you transmit with both antennas, then if you have them at an, at an angle, uh, this actually compensates for the inhomogeneities in the propagation pattern uh, of dipoles. But if it's just one, then um, it's better to have a more omnidirectional antenna. Uh, so I'm planning to mount uh, an LHCP uh, omnidirectional antenna here, but for now I'm just going to use this one. Uh, and I am going to use the standard Pavo 20 kit, except that the battery will go here at the top. And I printed this um, adapter to uh, mount the Thinker camera here. Uh, this was designed by Kenny, you can find it on printables. And also a thing I like is the wires the finger comes with are very long. So 
you should definitely have enough of wires uh, and they are they seem to be silicone wires because I have my soldering iron here at 360 degrees and it's not melting the insulation so that's very good because on a drone uh, you really want to have uh, wires that are heat resistant it also comes with all the necessary stuff for connecting it to your rotor for configuration and I also like that it comes with this 3D printed um, thing at the back which will mount here and also some screws so I'm going to mount it here later because I'm a bit worried of this cable disconnecting but this should this should help with that when I mount it like this uh, one thing that concerns me a bit is that this design requires um, the use of connectors um, now personally I really like to solder wires uh, solder all, all wires uh, onto my drone and not have uh, connectors like this because in the past I had issues with this camera where I powered it through a connector and it had issues of just the camera restarting mid-flight and obviously I crashed um, so that's why I decided to solder power here uh, and I only use the connector for the UART, which is uh, non-critical. Um, and here the design relies on connectors, but um, actually I didn't uh, see anyone on the chat having problems with this. So um, I might just be uh, over critical of connectors, but uh, I would have liked if there was also an option apart from the connector to have some pads on the PCB so that if you don't want to use a connector you could just solder uh, but I mean obviously this is such a small PCB that uh, the creators might have decided there isn't space which I fully understand this is a very very small um, design uh, these holes are 20 by 20 by the way so without the heatsink you could mount it on a 20 by 20 uh, millimeter stack but I'm going to leave the heatsink on. Uh, one random thing I noticed about the heatsink, which I don't know if it's uh, an intentional design feature or whether it's an error in manufacturing, but you can see that uh, the thickness here is the same on three of the corners, but one corner is thicker. So actually I noticed it because uh, in my modified uh, Pavo 20 uh, frame I tried to mount it like this but it would wobble and at first I thought that uh, I just modified it so that these are not at the same height but then I noticed that it's um, the height is actually different on one corner uh, which I don't really know why this is the case um, it might have been a deliberate choice or a manufacturing error, but this is just something to keep in mind. I don't think it's a very uh, big issue. So I've installed this um, 3D printed back plate and I think I'll leave it like this uh, since it seems to be more uh, sturdy in terms of uh, uh, MIPI connection. Uh, one other thing I noticed is that um, the lens is not... Um, is not focused uh, it can rotate freely um, I think this is uh, to enable people who like different uh, kinds of focus to focus it in, in their own way but uh, I'll probably have to put a drop of glue somewhere to um, keep it from rotating during flight once I adjust the focus so the thing here, uh, together with its uh, back plate that I mounted on the sensor module, uh, it weighs about 13 or 14 grams. And if I also add this simple antenna, it becomes about 14 grams, uh, which is much lower than my previous uh, setup, which weighed about 28 grams. So this is the IP camera 
this is the Wi-Fi module and this is the uh, 5 volt uh, regulator which takes battery voltage converted into stable 5 volts um, whereas the thinker doesn't need that because it it can already directly be powered uh, by battery voltage uh, through this connector so this set this um, setup together with with the antenna is essentially equivalent to this entire setup uh, and it's much lighter uh, although uh, the disadvantage is that the Wi-Fi module here is uh, much less powerful than this one but um, if you need a very lightweight um, FPV system for a small drone then this is much better so to get the thinker to fit nicely here under the flight controller uh, I am modifying this frame it's already been modified before uh, because I wanted to put uh, the Wi-Fi module uh, under the flight controller but here I want even more space for the thinker so what I'm doing is taking my soldering iron and uh, heating it up to about 200 degrees and heating up this um, metal insert and essentially pushing it in because uh, once it heats up from the soldering iron it will melt the plastic around it and I'll be able to move it. So this is what I've done to this uh, to this brass insert here and the next step is to essentially um, sand it down using a file so I'll essentially do the same step for all four of these inserts uh, to make space for the thinker so it took a bit of work but I managed to uh, make those uh, inserts essentially flush with the frame uh, so that it, now it's possible to have the finger mounted like this with the cable stout here inside and now I have to mention the uh, cable for the camera uh, is quite long uh, but if you're ordering this camera from the OpenIPC store, um, I believe now they have a shorter version of the cable uh, you can buy. And so uh, for smaller drones you'll probably want the shorter version of the cable. So the build is finished. As you can see I managed to mount uh, the finger on the bottom uh, just like I wanted. Uh, the excess length of the cable is um, stored underneath the thinker in this space uh, and I'm mounting the battery on top uh, using the Pavo 20 bracket um, I know that this frame was originally designed to have the battery on the bottom to have a smaller battery and to have the air unit uh, DJI 03 on top uh, but I just like having the battery on top because I think it gives a better um, weight distribution. And the sensor module is mounted here using this um, 3D printed TPU uh, protector. And the antenna is sticking out here. I wanted to mount the antenna here in the back, but unfortunately this antenna I had was too short. And... I could only get it uh, to here, but once I get the better uh, circularly polarized antenna that should have a longer cable, so I should be able to mount it here. So now it's time to uh, update the firmware on the thinker, uh, upload um, my key and fonts and uh, the configuration and then we'll give it a test. And the entire build weighs about 128 grams. Unfortunately, after a couple of times of uh, plugging and unplugging this connector for Ethernet connectivity um, to the thinker, one of the wires came out. 
So you need to be careful with this connector because it seems to be pretty fragile. Um, I'll try to fix it and maybe add some hot glue around it to uh, make it um, more durable. So I ended up taking the red wire from here, which was unused together with uh, uh, white wire. Uh, and I'm going to put it here and just solder it and put hot glue uh, on the edge of the connector here to strengthen it. So this is how the fixed connector looks like now. And I'm going to use it to connect the uh, thinker unit uh, to my router to uh, change the settings. To fix the lens in place, I tried to use a drop of hot glue, but it didn't work very well. I ended up cutting out a ring of foam which compresses and acts as a spring to add friction to the lens rotation. So let's take it out on a flight. The main difference using the Finger Tiny compared to my previous setup is my drone's weight which got reduced by about 10%. While my drone was just about able to carry a DIY open IPC setup, there are many smaller drones where the existence of a small air unit like the Thinker makes the difference between being able to use open IPC or not. In this sense, the Thinker Tiny is a game changer. Here you can see my clumsy attempts at chasing some pigeons, and I have to say, I really feel the weight difference. My drone is quite a bit more responsive. I like that the lens that comes with the Thinker has a very wide field of view, but I have mixed feelings towards it. I had trouble focusing it correctly. It seemed like the left and right parts of the image needed a slightly different lens position to stay in focus. So the lens position I ended up using is a compromise between these two focus levels, which isn't perfect. The video range is also lower than with my previous setup because of the lower output power and just one antenna, but I know from experience that the range can be improved with a better omnidirectional antenna. I have already ordered an LHCP lollipop antenna and I'll try it with the Thinker once it arrives. I used the VTX menu to change some settings between flights. You can enter the VTX menu of OpenIPC by moving both sticks on your controller to the bottom and to the center of the controller. It's a very handy feature for changing settings in the field. Here I changed the MCS index, which is the radio modulation scheme, to accommodate a higher video bitrate. Then I increased the bitrate from 12 to 16 megabits per second. To sum up, I really like the Thinker Tiny thanks to its small size and low weight. While there exist a couple of other OpenIPC Air units made by companies such as Runcam and Emacs, only one, the Emacs Wyvern 100mW unit comes close to the Thinker's compact size. The only issues I have with it are the lens, the fragile connector of the Ethernet adapter that comes in the kit, and the small asymmetry in the aluminium heatsink. I think that despite these issues, the Thinker is a great product, and I am looking forward to the future hardware developments from the OpenIPC team. I would like to thank the OpenIPC team for their work and for sending me the Thinker unit free of charge. Thank you for watching.